Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. When people think of the US military's cargo fleet, they often picture the rugged C-130 Hercules or the versatile C-17 Globemaster III. They both are remarkable workhorses, transporting supplies and personnel to practically any corner of the globe. Often used together, the C-130 is best known for its short landing and takeoff abilities and remote airstrip capabilities, while the C-17 can do both tactical and strategic missions in no time. But when it comes to the biggest, and perhaps the most powerful transport aircraft ever placed in the air, the attention will turn to the behemoth C-5 Galaxy. The beautiful thing about this C-5M behind us is that one day it can deliver combat air power, such as Apache helicopters, it's delivering here for us today, and the next day it could be delivering humanitarian airlift around the world. One of these aircraft, or one very similar to it, about every two and a half to three minutes takes off or lands worldwide. That's a tremendous capability that we bring to our partners. We're very proud of it. This massive plane can carry huge amounts of cargo over extremely long distances, making it one of the most capable cargo carriers on the planet today. And that's what we'll dive into next. With all those powerful engines and its sheer wingspan, the C-5's most distinctive feature is whatever it carries inside it. The C-5 Galaxy remains an aircraft that is tremendously superior in total cargo volume compared to other heavy lifter fleets. Capable of moving vehicles, equipment, and supplies on an unequaled scale compared to other U.S. military aircraft. The C-5 Galaxy came about in the mid-1960s when the U.S. Air Force recognized its need for a plane that could move its really big cargo loads around the globe, which were beyond the capabilities of the existing transports. Lockheed, now Lockheed Martin, received the contract to build what would become the symbol of the might of the American airlift. By 1968, the prototype was already flying, and the first production models entered Air Force service in 1970. Over the years, the C-5 has seen a series of upgrades, refinements, and modernizations, cementing its place as a linchpin of U.S. strategic airlift capability. Now, let's get technical about this heavyweight champion. The latest variant is the C-5M Super Galaxy. Powered by four General Electric CF680C two turbofan engines, each generating roughly 50,000 pounds of thrust, enough to launch this massive airlifter off a runway in surprisingly short order. The humongous wings of the plane provide more than enough lift to cruise with a payload at about 518 miles per hour, or, in Mach terms, about Mach 0.77. In terms of capacity, the C-5 can transport numerous vehicles, helicopters, or, if necessary, an M1 Abrams main battle tank to a maximum of 36 fully loaded pallets. 
depending on the cargo that we carry, it's easier to load, uh, especially like uh, pallets, things like that. It's easier to load from the back in our truck bed mode is what they call it. Uh, where then once we have bigger objects like boats, helicopters, things like that, uh, the aircraft has a special capability to where we can kneel. Uh, the aircraft will essentially lower itself to the ground and then we can load larger cargo through the front end. The cargo bay can be described as cavernous, with a total length of about 121 feet, a maximum width of 19 feet, and a height of 13.5 feet. It provides somewhere well more than 31,000 cubic feet of space. It becomes apparent that the C-5 is rated among the heaviest aircraft in the world. The Air Force's advantage today lies in the fact that it has such aircraft, especially the modernized C-5M, which are on the constant alert to deliver mission-critical equipment to supporting theaters wherever and whenever. Training to operate and maintain a C-5 Galaxy isn't just about classroom lectures or digital simulations. It often involves working with the real thing right on the ground. At formal training sites, aspiring crew members and maintenance personnel train hands-on with real C-5M Super Galaxy components, including full-scale avionics systems. So this training that we have going on in the background, it's a C5 that's dedicated to us for two weeks that allows the maintainers and anyone else that wants hands-on training, they can get it done here on the flight line here in Yokota. So the career fields range from crew chiefs to jet mechanics to hydraulic mechanics to avionics specialists and even electronic and environmental guys. They come out here and they take the plane apart, give the guys actual training about their systems and even actually lift the aircraft in the midair. This direct exposure allows young airmen to build confidence early in training. They are not merely studying diagrams and theory. They are operating real switches, connecting real wiring harnesses, and fault-finding actual hardware issues. As technology continues to develop, these institutions upgrade their programs at the speed of that same technology. Modernized avionics packages, endowed with improved navigation, communication, and fault isolation capabilities, place all current C-5s far above their predecessors. The newest technologies in the training arena allow instructors to guarantee that every airman completes their training ready to deal with the latest systems with which they will have to perform once they step onto the active flight line. Of course, avionics training is only part of the picture. The four General Electric CF680C2 turbofans that drive the Super Galaxy also deserve careful attention. Each of the four turbofans weighs several thousand pounds and can deliver more than 50,000 pounds of thrust. It's important to do our part uh, to keep the engine well maintained, to ensure the safety of the crew and the aircraft and make sure nothing goes wrong in the sky. Because unlike a car, you can't pull over at a random gas station and just fix it. Large commercial and military turbofans generally require major overhauls, done approximately every 20,000 flight hours. In rare cases, an engine swap may be necessary if the performance goes down or the wear exceeds the safety limit. 
Replacing an engine is an extraordinary event in itself. Crews are taught how to pull and replace the Mammoth turbofans under a field simulation. All steps are practiced, from disconnecting fuel lines and hydraulic connections to aligning the engine before it's finally bolted back in. These ground-based learning tools, often called C5 ground trainers, are built to replicate the real aircraft as closely as possible. There's nothing more exciting to see than massive helicopters in action. The sheer size, power, and capabilities of these behemoths make you feel a sense of awe. And when it comes to seeing a heavy lift helicopter such as the CH-53K King Stallion in action, one can't simply take eyes off it. First introduced as the CH-53A in the early 1960s, it proved its worth during the Vietnam War. The helicopter was capable of transporting up to 38 fully equipped troops, carrying 8,000 pounds of internal cargo, or lifting 13,000 pounds externally via a single-point sling hook. The U.S. military felt the urge to lift additional weight, so they decided to develop an enhanced variant, the CH-53 DC Stallion. It featured improved engines, transmission, and a revised interior to carry up to 55 soldiers at a time. This helicopter was so powerful that it could take off with a maximum weight of 42,000 pounds. However, with an increment in logistical operations, the U.S. military decided to develop a new variant, the CH-53E, with an additional third engine, which ultimately increased its power and capacity to lift heavy cargo. It was capable of transporting up to 30,000 pounds of cargo internally and up to 36,000 pounds of slung loads externally. The recent decades have shown a marked increase in the use of heavy lift helicopters, particularly due to their payload, range, and performance. This increase in demand prompted the U.S. Marine Corps to develop the Sikorsky CH-53 K King Stallion. Featuring new engines, composite rotor blades, and a wider cabin, to replace its heavy lift workhorse CH-53E. In Marine Corps circles, the King Stallion has earned the call sign Kilo, while its predecessor, the CH-53E, is simply known as Echo. The Kilo feels great uh, compared to the Echo. Uh, it does feel different. Uh, it's much, uh, it's very intuitive. Uh, you do have to work less to fly it. Uh, it's a lot more systems intensive, but uh, the systems are very easy to use and they're very quick to get used to. CH-53K King Stallion is a next generation heavy lift helicopter developed by Sikorsky Aircraft a Lockheed Martin company. The United States Marine Corps, USMC, is acquiring it to replace the aging CH-53E Super Stallion and plans to procure 200 CH-53K helicopters at a total cost of $25 billion. The ground test vehicle testing for the CH-53K began in April 2014, whereas the testing began with the maiden flight on 27th October 2015.
The Marine Corps received the first CH-53K in May 2018, and it has recently passed the initial operational capability. The CH-53K has undergone several performance tests in more than 1,200 test flight hours. Before every flight, the crew performs pre-flight checks on the helicopter to ensure everything works perfectly. The exterior is inspected thoroughly. The fuselage is examined for leakage, and all the electronic systems are checked by the pilot before takeoff. Once pre-flight inspection is completed, the crew takes off and advances toward the mission location. In addition to external lift capabilities, the CH-53K features an internal cargo bay, which is 30 feet long and 9 feet wide, and can carry 35,000 pounds of cargo, such as 463 liters pallets, Humvees, and 30 fully equipped soldiers. In addition, the cargo bay facilitates the loading and unloading of cargo without reconfiguring and removing troop seating. The loading and unloading operations are conducted via the rear ramp. The story of American heavy lift aviation is really a story of unmatched global reach. From the towering C-5 galaxy that carries tanks, helicopters, and even satellites across continents, to the CH-53 King Stallion that lifts armored vehicles straight off the battlefield, these machines form the backbone of rapid response for the United States military. They are more than steel and engines. They are strategic tools that move entire missions, entire units, and sometimes entire communities towards safety and stability. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.